Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Nick Larigakis, president of the American Hellenic Institute. And on behalf of the American Hellenic Institute, our nonprofit independent Greek American think tank and public policy center, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our briefing to commemorate the 48th anniversary of Turkey's illegal invasion of the Republic of Cyprus that occurred in two phases and in violation of US law, the UN charter, the NATO treaty and customary international law. Today, 48 years later, Turkey continues its illegal occupation of Cyprus, an EU member nation and a United States strategic partner with upwards of 40,000 troops in violation of the rule of law. In a human rights tragedy, nearly 1,000 Cypriots remain missing and unidentified from this invasion, including four Americans. Turkey also insists on dated and intransigent stances towards a Cyprus settlement and conducts acts of provocation, aggression towards Cyprus that includes public calls for a quote, two state solution. The reopening of Arosia beachfront in violation of Cyprus's exclusive economic zone. This morning, we will assess the current prospects for a solution. We look forward to hearing from our champions on Capitol Hill on the Cyprus issue. I would also like to take a moment to thank the co-chairs of the Hellenic Caucus, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, and Congressman Gus Bilirakis for the support of today's briefing. Finally, we also have three special guests with us today, the Ambassador of Greece to the United States, Alexandra Papadopoulou, the Deputy Chief of Mission from the Embassy of the Republic of Cyprus, Maria Savido Panayotou, and Dr. Zina Christodilou, Chairman of AHEPA Cyprus and Hellenic Affairs Committee. And to begin, I would like to start off with the Ambassador of Greece to the United States, Alexandra Papadopoulou. Madam Ambassador. Thank you so much. July and August 1974 are two months that are engraved in the, the collective Hellenic psyche with dark, dark colors. The Turkish invasion and occupation of Cyprus, of the northern part of Cyprus, which happened in two phases in July and August 1974, is a live wound in the hearts and minds of all Hellenes, of the entire Hellenism. But it's also a dark wound and a live wound in the international community's quest for a rules-based international order. Today, we honor the lives and sacrifices of those who lost their lives during the invasion. We also honor the memory of those who lost loved ones and never lived to see them, their bodies coming back because we had a lot of missing persons whose remains have not been identified yet. We honor also the sacrifices of the entire Cypriot Hellenism uh, that went uh, through this dark period uh, and managed to rebuild their lives uh, and they rebuild, rebuild uh, the free Cyprus, the Cypriot Republic. Uh, and we all promise to them that we will continue uh, this effort to reunite the island. But above everything else, today we give exactly this promise that the island should be reunited based on the Security Council resolutions uh, and because it's, it's, a, an, a, it's a, an obligation of the international community that the products uh, of an invasion, illegal invasion and occupation are never accepted and never sanctioned. If we allow these products to be, uh, to be sanctioned and accepted, uh, then we open the door to much worse tragedies to happen, not only when it comes to Hellenism, but the entire world. So today is a day of remembrance and a promise. A promise that we will never forget uh, and we will work uh, tirelessly to correct uh, and have uh, to work with what happened uh, and have a free united Cyprus again. Thank you so much, Ahi and uh, Nick Larigakis, for today's event. Uh, and of course, my biggest appreciation and appreciation by all of us uh, to those in Congress who are at the forefront of the fight uh, for justice for, for Cyprus. Thank you so much. My ambassador, thank you very much for once again being part of an American Hellenic Institute event and for your very uh, succinct, poignant words. Thank you very much. Uh, Maria Savido, I will ask your indulgence uh, to yield your time to a, a Congressman uh, Fleischman who's with us uh, because I know the Congressman's time is short. 
Uh, so I want to ask you, Congressman, to go ahead and give your remarks now. The Congressman is a good friend of uh, issues of the rule of law in the Eastern Mediterranean, and he comes from the state of Tennessee. So, Congressman, thank you for being with us. Well, thank you, and thank you to everyone on this call. Let me start with a very solemn uh, understanding and sympathy uh, for what has happened to Greece uh, in Cyprus uh, by Turkey over 48 years ago. Um, let's face it, Greece is our ally. It's a great country. The contributions to Western civilization by Greece are just incredible to our democracy um, and to our way of life. Um, also in the modern era, Greek has been a great ally of the United States, which I'm very pleased. Uh, it's been a great friend to Israel at a time when Israel needed friends. So, uh, but what happened uh, in Cyprus was wrong then, it's wrong now. I know a lot of the Greek treasures have been, been harmed um, and uh, the world should not stand for this, nor should they forget uh, that this was just sheer Turkish aggression uh, against Cyprus, uh, and it needs to be ultimately reversed uh, in favor of Greece. Uh, as I close, I want you to know this. My dear friend Gus Bilirakis is your hero. Um, uh, he's my roommate. He's my friend. Uh, Greece has no greater uh, fan and supporter in the United States Congress, either the House or Senate, than Congressman Gus Bilirakis. Uh, just I'm heartened that Ms. Maliotakis from New York has been uh, uh, basically uh, elected and the like, but Gus is your person, Gus is your hero, uh, and Gus is my leader on Greek issues. So I go to Gus on things, and he does so much uh, for Greek culture, for, for Greeks in America, for Greeks all over the world. So uh, this is a solemn day. This is a sad day, but better days are ahead for Greece uh, and for uh, ultimately a free and liberated Cyprus. So thank you. Thank you very much, Congressman. Very much appreciate your comments. Uh, and now we will turn uh, to Maria Savido, who is the Deputy Chief of Mission at the Embassy of the Republic of Cyprus here in Washington, D.C., representing the Cyprus government and her ambassador, uh, Mr. Mario Siciotis. Uh, Maria, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Larinkakis, and thank you for, thank you and the co-chairs of the uh, Hellenic Caucus for organizing today's uh, event. It is indeed a, a happening in my country is indeed an open wound, and it is an affront to international uh, to the international rules based order. This year, the sirens sounded once more in Cyprus at the exact time they blasted in the early morning of July 20th, 1974, to warn civilians of the unfolding Turkish invasion. A brutal military act, a violent, unjustified act of aggression against the territorial integrity of a sovereign independent. Today, we mark 48 years of continuing Turkish occupation, 48 years of continuing violation of fundamental principles of international law in the UN Charter, 48 years of continuing flagrant violation of the rights of Cypriots. I want to stress the word continuing. Today, we're not commemorating an act of the past, but a violation with continuing impact, grave consequence, and immense humanitarian suffering. For 48 consecutive years, Cyprus and its people remain forcefully and artificially divided. 37% of the territory of Cyprus remains occupied by more than 40,000 Turkish troops. 200,000 Greek Cypriots have been forcefully displaced, many coming as refugees to the United States of America, still deprived of their right to return to their homes and their properties. More than 750 people, including four American citizens, are still missing. Fewer than 400 Greek Cypriots and Maronites out of 20,000 people at the end of August 1974 remain enclaved in occupied villages under conditions of oppression and deprivation. 
the attempt to alter the demographic structure and the cultural identity of Cyprus continues. The destruction of cultural property in Christian sites, the looting and pillage of religious and cultural artifacts, the Turkification of the names of places have been pursued in unparalleled scale. The waves of the thousands of settlers brought to the occupied areas by the occupying power in violation of international humanitarian law, today far outnumber Turkish Cypriots and control political decision-making. Turkey is currently waging a full-scale attack on the Turkish Cypriot secularism, their Cypriot identity, and their existence on Cyprus. Contrary to numerous UN Security Council resolutions, which demand that Varosha be immediately returned to its former inhabitants and rightful owners, Turkey has actively been pursuing the opening of the city under its control. Contrary to the agreed form of settlement and UN Security Council resolutions, Turkey continues to pursue the partition of Cyprus and the imposition of a two-state solution. And all this in a context of a broader historical revisionism and regional aggression that poses a security threat in the Eastern Mediterranean. So we're here today to declare that we don't forget the brutal crime perpetrated against Cyprus and its people. We don't forget the fallen, the displaced, the enclaved, the missing. And we do not accept, we will not accept the fait accompli attempted by Turkey in Cyprus. We do not accept the normalization of the occupation. We do not accept the division. We do not accept Turkey's revisionism and aggression. We remain committed to finding a just and viable settlement that will reunify our island and its people on the agreed basis of a bizonal by communal federation with political equality as set out in UN Security Council resolutions and in line with the principles on which the EU is founded. A solution that will end the occupation of Turkey and its presence on Cyprus, allowing the country to function as a viable, independent and sovereign state, member of the European Union. A settlement that will benefit equally all Cypriots, Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots, fully respecting their human rights, allowing them to live together in conditions of peace, stability and prosperity. We're grateful to everybody on the call today, the organizations, and of course the Congress and the Hellenic Caucus in particular for their continued commitment, support, and advocacy for this cause. There is a lot to do. The continuing Russian aggression against Ukraine sheds a particular spotlight this year on the plight of Cyprus, the continuing violation of its territorial integrity and the rights of its people. It brings to the forefront the need to act in urgency to ensure the same respect for international legality and human rights, principles that are held in high esteem by both Cyprus and the US. We must stand firm at the right side of history and remain resolute in the pursuit of a just solution to the Cyprus problem and the end of the Turkish occupation of Cyprus. I thank you very much. Thank you very much, Maria, and thank you for highlighting all the various facets that were created by the invasion from the missing to the enclave and to so many other issues that were created because of this illegal and continuing uh, in, uh, occupation uh, of the Republic of Cyprus by Turkey, a NATO member. Um, and of course, bringing in parallels with Ukraine, uh, which were, as we'd like to say, uh, the same violations of international law perpetrated uh, by uh, Russia against Ukraine are the same ones that Turkey perpetrated uh, and violated in regards to Cyprus back in 1974. And Turkey, of course, is a NATO ally. Well, that's for another discussion for another day, but I think everyone understands. Right now, I'd like to turn to another guest uh, that we have live here is uh, the Order of Ahef and the American Hellenic Institute have had a tremendous uh, relationship uh, for 48 years since uh, we at the American Hellenic Institute have been uh, in existence, but they uh, have uh, just celebrated, uh, this year celebrates its 100th year anniversary. I believe technically uh, just a couple of days ago was the actual date of when the mother chapter was established in, in Atlanta. And it's a pleasure to have with us uh, Dr. Zinar Hislodulu, 
who is the chairman of the Cyprus and Hellenic Affairs Committee. Uh, Zina, my good friend, it's a pleasure to welcome you and uh, we we'll give you the opportunity uh, to say a few words on this uh, sad commemoration. Thank you so much, President Oligakis, Madam Ambassador, and Maria, thank you for joining us. And, and Nick, as you said, this is a very somber occasion. I wish we could get together under different circumstances. But 48 years has come and gone, and the global community doesn't seem committed to solving this problem. I remember in 1975, I went to a speech as a young boy that my dad gave on the, the commemoration. And I remember very clearly some of the words he said when he said that 12 months are 12 months too many. And 11 years later, I heard the same speech with one word change, that 12 years are 12 years too many. How many decades have to go by until the liberal world order, stability, democracy, and freedom take hold? And it can't be overestimated how much little incursions on democracy like this affect the present and will affect the future. We brought up the Ukraine and how true is that? Perhaps if the world had known that the global community would not accept invasions into other territories, maybe somebody would have had a second thought about invading Ukraine, assuming that the world would once again close its eyes and try to find their way out of enforcing rules and democracy. It's a tragic occasion, not just in the lives lost, but in the hopes and dreams that have faded in that invasion. Years ago, when they allowed for some border crossings, I went with my mother-in-law to Varosha, and we found our way to her childhood home that she grew up in and raised her young family in until that fateful day in 1974. And I was holding her arm as we approached her house and when she saw her house occupied by Turkish military, her legs fell from beneath her. And if I weren't holding her arm, she would have crashed to the floor because of the overwhelming sorrow and pain that she felt of not being able to live in her home. It's something we in America cannot possibly comprehend. And thank God for that. We can't imagine what it would be like if someone just said, get out of your home. It's mine now. Leave your neighborhood, leave your land, you're no longer welcomed here. These are simple things that we value, but where is the world community on this? They sometimes talk a nice game, but they don't enforce anything. We have some champions in the United States Congress and some champions in NATO and the EU, but they need to collectivize their voice. This is a problem which can be solved. It never should have happened in the first place. People's lives, were disrupted and it sends a terrible message to the rest of the world. As we're all aware of right now, other autocratic leaders are considering incursions into other places because they feel that the global community is unwilling and possibly unable to effectuate positive change. So on this very somber occasion, I hope that no one forgets. And I hope that we don't have to say in another 48 years that 96 years is way too many. Brother President, thank you, Nick Latergakis. Thank you so much for allowing me to, to help you commemorate this very somber and very profoundly sad occasion. And I hope that if we all work together and never forget that we will resolve these problems for the next generation to have hope, not just in, in Cyprus and in the United Island, but also in the rule of law, freedom, and democracy. Thank you, Dr. Hirsulolo, uh, for your uh, very fine and uh, touching comments and uh, we certainly hope to have a celebration uh, one of these years and not a commemoration and we all look forward to that but now unfortunately we still are in the commemoration phase uh, and we do have with us here today a uh, good friend representative uh, dina titus from uh, las vegas a place where greek americans like to go to as dina <laughs> likes to say and of course she's also on a sits on a very important uh, House Foreign Affairs Committee, and she's been very engaged in advancing uh, issues of the Eastern Mediterranean as it relate to the rule of law and U.S. interest on Cyprus and Greece. So, Congresswoman Titus, it's a pleasure to have you with, uh, with us here today, and uh, we give you uh, the floor. Well, thank you so much, Nick, and thank you to AHI for bringing us together and for being such strong advocates on the Hill. You provide us really 
up-to-date information and help us to uh, solicit support for our causes. There's no way I can be as eloquent as the doctor was in describing uh, the feelings and the situation and, and the heartbreak of uh, the people of Cyprus. But I am glad to be here for this commemoration. You know, every July 20th, we have to stop and take a moment to remember, but it shouldn't just be on this one day. It's something that we have to work on all the time. Uh, in the Foreign Affairs Committee, as you mentioned, Nick, <coughs> excuse me, I'm trying to do that. I'm trying to be sure that the U.S. policies and the strategies reflect our interests in the region, and that includes a number of things, looking for solutions to the Cyprus problem, resolving the legal status of Barosha, protecting Cyprus's economic, uh, exclusive economic zones, and just continuing to provide ample support uh, for our strategic partners in this part of the Eastern Mediterranean. This also includes, <clears throat> I don't know why I can't talk this morning, excuse me. <clears throat> Let me have a swig of tea. There you go. Uh, this also includes especially something that we've been working on more recently, and that's blocking the transfer of the F-16 fighter jets to Turkey, because this will just embolden Erdogan and his efforts to undermine the regional stability and sabotage legitimate efforts to solve the Cyprus problem. He is not a reliable ally. He's turned against his partners in NATO, and we should do everything we can to block this sale. I was I led this effort, and I was glad that we got bipartisan support here in the House. Gus was, Bill Arrakis was great in rounding up Republican votes, and it passed in a very strong way. We should also remember that Frank Pallone, who represents the Armenian community, got them engaged in this too, because it's certainly not in their interest to see uh, the Turkish Turkey gain more of these fighter pilots. You know, if you look at what's happened just this year alone, Turkey's violated the airspace of fellow NATO ally Greece over almost 2,400 times just in this year, and included 120 overflights in Greek territory. So that's why we've got to be sure that uh, we ask some important questions of the administration, and that's what the amendment does that we got into the NDAA. We want to know why Turkey would be exempt from the CATSA sanctions and how the administration can mitigate the risk of co-locating those F-16s with our relationship with Russia. Uh, we've seen Erdogan and Iran and Russia become cozier and cozier. And how does that um, jive with the, our sanctions on Russia and the fact that Russia has already sold uh, equipment and, and pilot, uh, fighter pilots of their system to Turkey. So these are the issues that we've got to have addressed and uh, with an assurance that Turkey won't use these planes to continue to antagonize uh, everybody in the Aegean, especially flying over Greece. I know that we have support in the Senate for this. Uh, Chairman Menendez is very supportive of it. So I'm hoping that we can keep it in, uh, in the NDAA because this is not just about military actions and alliances, we've got to remember that Turkey is a great abuser of human rights and religious freedoms. And so it's an overall concern about the policy direction that Turkey is going in and the problems that it's caused NATO. Greece and, and Cyprus are our strong allies on this southern fr uh, front, and we need to do all we can to support both of them. Cyprus has stood out as a constant partner in the Eastern Mediterranean. They've offered the U.S. overflight accessibility. They've served as a center for extensive backup for our armed forces. And so strengthening this relationship becomes really very important, especially as Turkey tries to destabilize the region. In recent years, our relationship with Cyprus has gotten stronger. We are doing mili joint military exercises. There's substantial investment by the U.S. in Cyprus for cybersecurity, cooperation, and construction of permanent facilities. So I think we are moving in the right direction, but we have a, a 
way to go. And on the list of things that we need to do along these same lines is fully lifting the arms embargo. There's no reason that that should remain in place. Uh, not only are defense uh, investments increasing and dialogue going on, but also looking for economic opportunities. You know, the three plus one, which is Israel, Greece, and Cyprus plus the United States is being very actively engaged in the energy uh, industry, and that will benefit the whole area and the U.S., we need Cyprus as a friend in this region. We need to do all we can to strengthen that relationship. Today is a day to commemorate a historic event that was tragic, but also a day to recommit to uh, strengthening the relationship, trying to come to a solution. And as you said so perfectly, let's hope we have a celebration soon instead of a commemoration. So thank you, Nick, and all of you for letting me join you. You know that uh, as a Greek American, these issues are part of my DNA, not just something that I do as a sideline. So you can always consider me your, your friend here in the House Foreign Affairs Committee and in the Congress. And well, come you, and see us in Las Vegas. <laughs> well, Dina, now again, thank you. Thank you very much for your comments. And if I just may pick up on one point that you mentioned, and that's the ITAR, and that's exceptionally important for so many different reasons uh, to remove uh, Cyprus from the ITAR list. They're, they're on a list with countries such as Venezuela, Cuba, and North mm -hmm. Korea, and that's unacceptable. And we need to remember that there were two conditions in the East Med Act bill of, of Menendez that passed that, that Cyprus had to satisfy these two conditions. And by yeah. all accounts, including, including administration officials, those two conditions have been met. So there's no reason why, you know, that Cyprus is still on the ITAR list. So we look forward to, you know, your support and, you know, calling, you know, holding their feet to the fire and have them be accountable for what is codified U.S. law. So we yeah. thank you once again, and uh, we wish you all the best and look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just as a reminder to those who are uh, tuning in, we're going to be on for about another hour. We have a, a, approximately an, uh, another 10 or 12 individuals uh, from the Congress who are gonna be participating. Uh, and, and true uh, transparency, some will be by video and some will be uh, live. Uh, and uh, since no one right now has joined us uh, uh, live, we are gonna go uh, to a, a video message. And uh, the first one is uh, from the Archbishop, our Archbishop, His Eminence, Archbishop of Pilophoros who uh, sends his regrets that he was not able to be with us live, but he did send us uh, a video message. Dear President Laringakis and friends of the American Hellenic Institute, honorable members of the Congressional Hellenic Caucus, fellow Greek Americans and Philelines, I am honored to address all of you today in recognition of the American Hellenic Institute's annual observance of the unjust and illegal invasion of Cyprus 48 years ago. The participation of honorable members of the United States Congress, and especially those of the Congressional Hellenic Caucus, adds to the gravity of this somber commemoration. For the invasion of Cyprus by Turkey was a violent and completely unnecessary act of aggression, much like the invasion of Ukraine by Russia. No amount of charges and counter charges can justify what happened in Cyprus those many years ago. And I want to express my personal gratitude and the gratitude of the entire Greek American community to the American Hellenic Institute for being a voice that will never be silenced as we all seek justice for Cyprus and the righteous solution to the dividing goods caused by Turkey's destructive invasion. For the people of Cyprus, the island nation of a vast and incredibly deep history, the last 48 years have been marked by a continuous pain. The land itself has been wounded. Ethnic cleansing has occurred. 
and the faith of the Orthodox, a faith against which the gates of hell itself will not prevail, this faith has been attacked. Churches looted and destroyed, and families denied the remains of their ancestors. We all know that justice for the least of those among us is justice for all. There can be no true standard of international peace without peace for Cyprus, a country whose prosperity has endured even in the face of such unrighteous division. I want to express again to the American Hellenic Institute and to President Laringakis my thankfulness for Institute's advocacy. And I want to commend our elected representatives for their commitment to seeing justice done in Cyprus. The Eastern Mediterranean is a region not only of supreme civilizational and cultural importance, but also of tremendous economic potential. The realization of all its potentialities depends on a just and peaceful solution in Cyprus. I pray it will come much sooner than later. We have waited nearly 50 years. Let us all work for a unified and united Cyprus. Thank you. May God bless the Republic of Cyprus and may God bless the United States of America. Well, we thank the uh, Archbishop uh, for his very uh, generous uh, message uh, uh, today on this commemoration. Uh, and with us right now, we do have uh, Gus Belarakis. It looks like uh, you're with us, Gus. Is that correct? Gus, are you with us? I see uh, your name on the screen. Well, I guess he's, uh, he's there, but he must have stepped away. So what I'd like to do is uh, go on to another video. And that is um, a video message that was sent in by uh, another good friend, Senator Chris Van Hollen, uh, who sits on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and the Senate Appropriations Committee, two exceptionally important committees of the Congress as it relates to uh, issues of the Eastern Mediterranean. Senator Van Hollen. Hi, I'm Chris Van Hollen, and I'm proud to represent Maryland in the United States Senate and to be a friend of Cyprus. I want to salute Nick Larigakis and all my friends at the American Hellenic Institute, as well as Congresswoman Maloney, Congressman Bilirakis, and members of the Hellenic Caucus. And we're honored to be joined by the Greek ambassador, the deputy chief of mission from Cyprus, and all the other leaders and foreign dignitaries joining this gathering. Every year we come together to observe this important time for community and commemoration. We have a solemn duty to continue to observe the dark anniversaries of the Turkish invasion of Cyprus, to continue to recognize the harsh past that has led us to this point, and to continue to dedicate ourselves to lighting the way toward a brighter, more just, and more peaceful future. 48 years of occupation is 48 years too long for all Cypriots. And today, we must do everything in our power to end the unacceptable situation. I've walked the green line in Cyprus, I've witnessed the deep scar that continues to divide this beautiful and historic island. And I'm committed to ending the Turkish occupation and bringing about a just solution. I will continue to push for a Cyprus settlement based on the bi-zonal, bi-communal approach that reflects our common values of freedom, dignity, and international law. We must also make very clear to President Erdogan that any attempt to resettle Varosha would be a gross violation of several United Nations Security Council resolutions and will be met with robust multilateral sanctions. 
and we should work with our EU partners to do that. In response to President Erdogan's provocations in Verosha last year, I led a bipartisan group of senators in urging President Biden to utilize both bilateral and multilateral sanctions to pressure Turkey to halt its illegal actions. And I will continue to speak up and speak out against similar actions by Turkey going forward. That priority goes hand in hand with additional efforts to strengthen the bilateral relationship between the United States and the Republic of Cyprus. The good news is our relationship has never been stronger. Cyprus is a key strategic partner in the region, bolstering security and serving as a bridge between the United States and the Eastern Mediterranean. In the United States Senate, I'm continuing to encourage closer cooperation between the United States and Cyprus, and I urge the Biden administration to lift the U.S. arms embargo on Cyprus in accordance with the Eastern Mediterranean Security and Energy Partnership Act of 2019. That action would strengthen the ties that bind the United States and Cyprus and complement other actions to advance our shared values of cooperation, security, and peace. I want to commend everybody in attendance for their work supporting those core principles. And I look forward to continuing to partner with you on these vital matters of peace and justice. Thank you. Take care. Hello. We thank the Senator from Maryland for those very fine comments as always. And now I'm in one of those dilemmas where I have two US congressmen here on and live at the same time, <laughs> but I'm gonna be fair here. Gus, you were on, but you, you left. So John came before you. I'm gonna to have to yield the floor to, to John Sarbanes, uh, congressman from Maryland, obviously, and a, and a colleague in the US Congress of, uh, uh, of Van, Christopher Van Hollen. Uh, always a pleasure to see you, John. Welcome for unfortunately another uh, commemoration on this dark occasion. Thanks very much, Nick. And I'll be very brief out of respect for, for my colleague, uh, Congressman Bill Arrakis. We've been a team, as you know, working with others here uh, in the House of Representatives and across the Capitol to make sure that the interests of Greece and Cyprus and those relationships with the United States are, are well preserved and those ties continue to be very strong. So I just wanted really to come by um, and thank you, Nick and AHI for your leadership, partnering with uh, so many organizations that have made this a priority, this being restoring justice and freedom for the people of Cyprus. Uh, 48 years is a, you know, it's, it's every commemoration of this every year that we mark it, um, it's, it's a stain against uh, principles of justice um, and human rights and, and 48 years in, uh, we have to bring attention to that. I was thinking about how in 1984, when I was a, um, a student in college, that was 10 years into the occupation, I wrote, a, I wrote an op-ed for the college newspaper talking about uh, the illegal occupation and at that time, I guess, quite naively thinking that if we brought about the right kind of pressure, we could achieve a solution there uh, quickly. And here we are now, um, you know, another 38 years from that point at the 48th uh, anniversary. But we're going to continue to push. Um, Gus and I and others are going to uh, continue to be partners with you here in Congress to make sure the voice of the Cypriot people um, is lifted up and that we push for that bi-zonal, bi-communal federation that, that Senator Van Hollen just uh, referred to. Um, we have taken action recently to hold Turkey accountable. That's part of the larger strategic approach we need uh, to take. As you know, the uh, effort to get an amendment on the NDAA to push back against Turkey's um, unauthorized, repeated overflights of Greek territory um, is just a, the beginning of the kind of accountability that we need to enforce. Um, as Gus, I'm sure will speak to, we also want to lift that arms embargo on Cyprus. We've been able to do that on a partial basis over the last couple of years. We need to continue um, and uh, um, reach a kind of full lifting and repeal of the embargo because Cyprus is doing everything it should do in order to earn that. Uh, earn the lifting of that embargo. So you know that you have allies here. Um, and again, let me close by 
uh, saluting the efforts of AHI, thanking all of your members and partnering organizations uh, for commemor commemorating this illegal occupation and restating our determination collectively to make sure that we achieve justice and freedom for the people of Cyprus. And let me also just again, thank my colleague Gus Villarakis, who's been such a fabulous leader here in the United States Congress. Uh, we came in together, we served together, we collaborated and cooperated together uh, to advance the interests of Greece and Cyprus, uh, but particularly the United States, because that's what, that's why we do it, because a strong Cyprus, a strong Greece is good for the United States of America. That's where our motivation comes from. With that, I'll turn it back to you, Nick. Thanks very much. No, thank you very much, John, and very well said. Peace and stability is of paramount importance to U.S. geostrategic interests in the region, and certainly Greece and Cyprus uh, are providing that along with the partnership uh, with Israel. Uh, but as you said, though, we have to hold accountability of those in the, in the administration on certain things. And certainly the ITAR issue uh, is one that needs to be resolved quickly because if it doesn't, it sends a signal of appeasement to Turkey, in, in my opinion. So we thank you for your strong support and advocacy on the Hill, along with all, all your other colleagues and friends. So thank you again, John. Um, and now we turn, of course, to our uh, good friend uh, and uh, the co-chair and under the auspices of which today of the Hellenic Caucus that we hold this uh, commemoration uh, and who ever since been in Congress following in his father's footsteps, uh, who he, his father and with Carol Maloney did, uh, were the founders of the, of the caucus. Gus continues in that tradition and has done a tremendous job in terms of advocating for the issues of the Eastern Mediterranean within the context of the rule of law and US interest. And Gus, uh, your colleague earlier, uh, Chuck Fleischman, uh, you, should, you, should, you, should, you should buy him a, at least, a, at least a, a cup of coffee. He was singing your praises uh, earlier and congratulating you uh, and on all the great things that you're doing uh, up on the Hill. So uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us always, Gus, and we give you uh, the floor. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate it, Nick. And Nick, I know we have votes, but I just want to commend you because you're the right person uh, for, for this position uh, because you... You actually advocate from the heart. Uh, you care so very much. And, and I also want to uh, thank John. He's really been terrific. We, we disagree on some issues, but not these issues. Uh, and we work together really like brothers. Um, so, you know, these are nonpartisan issues. And again, whatever is good for Cyprus uh, and Greece is, is good for the United States of America. So uh, I do have a script here and I, uh, some really important words. So I'll get on with that. 48 years ago, the Republic of Cyprus, again, the, the Republic of Turkey illegally invaded the Republicans, uh, Republic of Cyprus. Since then, Cyprus and her people have been divided by Turkey's illegal military occupation. Whether Cy uh, Cypriots speak Greek or Turkish, they all deserve a bright and peaceful future as one Cypriot people, free people from the artificial divisions imposed upon them by the Republic of Turkey. The United States, the EU, and Cypriot communities around the world have rightfully condemned this illegal action, as well as the recent actions by Turkey, which have needlessly inflamed tensions and hampered pro prospects for a respectful, a respectful resolution. As the co-chair of the Congressional Caucus on Hellenic Issues and the Congressional Hellenic Israel Alliance, uh, I'm dismayed, but not surprised by uh, President Erdogan's uh, irresponsible comments, rejecting any solution that does not acquiesce uh, to Turkey's uh, demands to divide Cyprus and her people. And I will tell you, we got a great victory a couple, uh, well, a couple of weeks ago, uh, in passing this particular amendment uh, that uh, says that we should not be selling F-16s, transferring F-16s, or even upgrading their present uh, F-16s uh, to Turkey. Uh, and, and and this obviously it's in the best interest of the United States not to do this, and we need to convince the administration. I know we have support on the Senate side uh, with Senator Menendez and more than likely uh, Senator Rubio, 
to make sure that this survives uh, conference. So uh, it was a great victory and it was a great message that we sent, uh, you know, supporting Greece and Cyprus and the entire region uh, and a message that we're not gonna take this anymore uh, from the Turks and uh, President Erdogan or whatever he is now. Uh, he is the president, I guess. My caucus colleagues and I encourage all relevant stakeholders to pursue a uh, solution in line with the various resolutions of the UN Security Council. But the Republic of Turkey's consistent provocation, provocative behavior demonstrated is not serious about being a responsible actor in this uh, matter. Uh, the recent comments by President Erdogan and Turkey's continuing occupation and militarization of Cyprus's territory shows Turkey is unwilling to invest in a uh, solution that respects the rights of uh, the Cypriot people and endangers the peace, security, and st stability of the Eastern Mediterranean. Uh, this is These are all facts, uh, folks. I, I applaud and echo the Biden administration's condemnation of the Turkish, Turkish Cypriots' provocations um, and, and illegal actions on Varosha, one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. Uh, Varosha joining, uh, I joined my setting colleagues uh, in calling for multilateral sanctions given this violation of UN Security Council resolutions and defiance of uh, the international community. Folks, we just can't give up. Uh, you know, as Churchill said, never, ever, ever give up. Uh, I will continue to raise awareness about the plight of the Cypriot people, uh, condemn their provocative actions and statements by the Turkish occupiers, and continue the pursuit of free, a free and unified Cyprus. We're not going to rest until that happens, right, Nick? I will continue to speak out against Turkey's uh, repugnant policies toward the people of Cyprus and will use my influence within the United States Congress to demonstrate that such actions will further isolate Turkey from the global community. Education, 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 because people uh, have a good feeling about uh, uh, Cypriot Greeks uh, and also, of course, Greeks in the, in the motherland, uh, but we have to educate them. Uh, and, and they'll be with us. And that was exhibited in, uh, a couple of weeks ago with regard to that amendment proposed by uh, Representative pa Pappas and myself and supported by the entire Hellenic Caucus. In light of recent events, I joined with the bipartisan group, the Secretary General of the UN to firmly assert the United Nations authority to administer and prevent the resettlement of Varosha pursue the immediate and full implementation of the United Nations Security Council resolutions on Varosha and examine sanctions against Turkish and Turkish Cypriot attempts to illegally and unilaterally reopen and resettle this city. As always, I stand ready to work with the international allies to pursue a free and unified Cyprus because I believe the solution is beneficial to the Cypriot people and will strengthen, as uh, John Sarpain so able, ably put, uh, strengthen the strategic partnership between Greece, Cyprus, and the United States in order to bring peace and stability to the region. And because of the help of Nick uh, and other organizations, we've had a lot of success in the last three years, uh, you know, not just resolutions. Uh, and, and uh, ceremonial uh, things. We've actually gotten substantive work done on behalf of uh, Greece and Cyprus because it is in the best interest of the United States. So I appreciate all of your work, Aki's work and, uh, and other organizations that have done such an outstanding job. Uh, and, and of course, the prime minister of Greece made us all proud. Uh, when he spoke before the joint session of Congress, uh, and, and it really did benefit uh, so much goodwill in the United States Congress now for Greece, so and Cyprus because he mentioned Cyprus as well, and people support it. Uh, but again, we got to get the message out and educate, educate, edu educate not just our community, uh, the Hellenic community, but the community as a whole, um, because if they know 
what the Cypri the pe people have gone through uh, over the years, they would be supportive of, of us 100%. But thank you very much, Nick. If I still me and I'm sorry, I'm gonna go make these votes. Uh, Gus, thank you again so much. And as I see behind you, the replica of the Vince Lombardi trophy uh, is reminded me of what famously his, you know, a quote of his that we see where he says, what the hell's going on out there? And frankly, sometimes that's the way I feel regarding some of the policies as it relates specifically to our so-called friend and ally Turkey. What the hell is going on out yeah, there? And you know what, uh, Nick, uh, you both have that in common. <laughs> uh, you're both straight shooters, and I appreciate it very much. Thank you again, Gus. All the best yeah. to you. Thank you. And uh, so we thank uh, Gus Balarakis uh, for his comments. And now we go to a, a, a video uh, uh, message from Senator Gary Peters from uh, Indiana, Democrat, a close friend of the American Hellenic Institute and me members of the Greek American community. Uh, of Michigan, and he is on a, on the very important Armed Services Committee of the United States uh, Senate. So uh, we'll queue up now uh, Senator Gary Peters' message. Hello, I'm U.S. Senator Gary Peters, and uh, as we reflect on the 48th anniversary of Turkey's illegal and unjustified invasion of Cyprus, we must also commemorate the decades of partnership and collaboration between the United States and Cyprus since then. Cyprus continues to serve as a valuable partner in combating terrorism and threats to the international order and maintaining stability in the Eastern Mediterranean region. A united Cyprus is the best solution for prosperity for the island, as well as preserving the rich history and culture of its people, which is why it's critical that we continue working towards reunification and ensuring the rights of all Cypriots. So thank you for your dedicated efforts and leadership on this issue. I'll keep working to strengthen our Hellenic partnerships around the globe. We thank uh, Senator Peters for his message. And you, all of you got a, a glimpse there of our next uh, message. Unfortunately, uh, she was not able to uh, be with us here today, but she's always with us in, uh, in, in heart and spirit. And that's uh, Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney, uh, who is the co-founder and co-chair of the Congressional Hellenic Caucus. Uh, she's a Democrat from New York. And uh, we will now uh, have uh, her message, someone who uh, continues to uh, fight and advocate for the issues of the Eastern Mediterranean. Congresswoman Carolyn Maloney. Hello, and thank you to the American Hellenic Institute and my good friend, Nick Larigakis, for offering me the time to express my views on this dark anniversary for Cypriots around the world. 48 years ago, Turkey illegally occupied nearly a third of the Republic of Cyprus. Greek Cypriots were forced from their homes. Religious and cultural sites were desecrated and destroyed. And unfamiliar occupiers now took up positions in their gardens. Nearly five decades later, many still have not been able to return home. Despite numerous attempts and overtures at dialogue from both Greece and Cyprus, Turkey still insists that their illegal authorities that now administer the occupied areas should be recognized as a state. In contravention of all international laws and UN Security Council resolutions that obligate the return of Cyprus territory Compounding this ludicrous demand in the last year, Turkey directed their collaborators to proceed with a unilateral reopening of Arusha Beach, a Cypriot cultural landmark in violation of longstanding UN Security Council resolutions. I press the UN Secretary General to assert the United Nations authority to administer and prevent the resettlement of Arosha. But the situation has yet to change. I believe the U.S. must be increasingly vocal and lead the way in ensuring that international law is followed in this matter. I am also committed 
to demonstrating to Turkey that its actions have consequences and that we in Congress remain vigilant of their violations. That is in part why I co-led an amendment to the FY 2023 NDAA with representatives Pappas, Pallone, Bilarakis, and others to block the sale of modernized F-16 jets to Turkey over their violations of not just Cypriot sovereignty, but also that of Greece and their Aegean island. As co-chair of the Hellenic Caucus, I remain committed to helping Cyprus fully restore its territorial integrity. And I look forward to continuing to work with the Greek community to ensure that a peaceful future free from Turkish occupation can be enjoyed by all Cypriots. We thank uh, Congresswoman Maloney for her message. And now moving uh, right along, because we're expecting a few more members of Congress to join us shortly uh, live. Uh, I'd like to go to the message of Nicole Maliotakis, a Republican from New York, who uh, has been now for almost two years in Congress. And she's been tireless in her efforts in advocating for uh, issues of the Eastern Mediterranean. Congresswoman Maliotakis. 48 years ago this week, on July 20th, 1974, the Turkish military invaded the Republic of Cyprus in direct violation of the Charter of the United Nations and international law. To this day, there's been no accountability for the deaths, displacement, and destruction caused by this illegal invasion and occupation. I urge the President, Secretary Blinken and Congress to join calls for the immediate removal of Turkish troops, the return of property to rightful owners, and the reunification of Cyprus. Today, Cyprus, Greece, and other nations in the Eastern Mediterranean face more aggression and continued threats from Turkey under President Erdogan, who has threatened exclusive economic zones, ordered repeated military flyovers over the Greek islands, and undermines NATO sanctions on Russia and U.S. operations in Syria. Despite Turkey's aggression, President Biden plans to sell U.S. fighter jets to Turkey. We cannot allow this to happen. I thank my colleagues on both sides of the aisle for supporting our amendment to prevent this sale and our efforts to deliver justice for Cyprus. We thank uh, Congresswoman Maliotakis, who continues to be, as I said, a huge advocate for our issues on Capitol Hill. Uh, and as we are um, looking at the screen, the two individuals, uh, two members of Congress have not joined us live yet. So we will go then to a, another uh, video message. And this is uh, by a very uh, good friend, a high uh, senior, high ranking uh, Republican of, uh, member of Congress, on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, Chris Smith. Uh, Chris Smith has been a tremendous advocate for human rights for all the years that he's been in the US Congress. I remember having him as a keynote speaker uh, at Trent State College, where, which he is also an, uh, an alumnus of, uh, many, many years ago on, on a human rights issue that I was uh, organizing at the time. Uh, Congress Smith has also been awarded the Alexander the Great Public Service Award by the Greek American Community of New Jersey. As I said, a long, long time uh, supporter and advocate on Capitol Hill. And it's a pleasure now to uh, have uh, his message. Hi, this is Congressman Chris Smith from New Jersey. And I would like to begin by thanking the many Greek and Cypriot American leaders who are with us today and to extend a warm welcome to the Ambassador of Greece to the United States, Alexandra Papadopoulou, and Deputy Chief of Mission of the Embassy of Cyprus, Maria Savidou. I would also like to extend a particular thank you to our hosts, the American Hellenic Institute, under the leadership of a great friend of many years, Nick Laragakis, and the contributions made by his very capable colleague, Elias Gerasoulis. We know that Greece and Cyprus are true friends of the United States, and our ties are strong, which is something we celebrate today. While this is a jo joyful occasion, however, I also must introduce a somber note as we are another year closer to the half-century mark of Turkey's illegal and immoral occupation of Cyprus following its 1974 invasion. 
I have been in Congress since 1981, and the issue of Turkey's conduct, particularly with respect to destroying the religious and cultural heritage of occupied Cyprus, has been a consistent concern of mine and one on which I have engaged over the years. With Turkey under Erdogan, a dictator who disregards human rights both in Turkey and abroad, we see the past as prologue. In his mind, he seeks to recreate the Ottoman Empire and is on a trajectory to remove Turkey from the West. Indeed, his decision to purchase Russian S-400 missile systems, as well as his serious and sustained violations of Greek and Cypriot airspace are not the acts of a NATO ally, but of a rogue nation intent on disrupting the post-war order and replacing it with a regional neo-Ottoman hegemony extended from the Caucasus region to Syria, to the Horn of Africa, to Libya, and of course, through the Eastern Mediterranean. This is what makes the Biden's administration's recent proposal of a sale of F-16 fighter jets to Turkey, along with modernization kits, so egregiously wrong. This is something I am strenuously opposed to, and of course, it's not just me. There is bipartisan congressional opposition to this, as can be seen in an amendment we added to just the other week to the National Defense Authorization Act. Given the double game that Erdogan plays with Putin's Russia, as seen in his purchase of those S-400 missile system. Turkey's acquisition of the F-16 and modernization kits poses serious co-location risks. Indeed, this was the very reason we expelled Turkey from the even more advanced F-35 program. Furthermore, the sale of F-16s to Turkey would violate U.S. law, since the Turkish military procurement industry, the SSB, is sanctioned by the Countering America's Adversaries Through Sanctions Act, uh, commonly known as CATSA. These grave concerns make the entire notion of F-16 F modernization unconscionable and unthinkable. We will fight this. The security of the people of free Cyprus, as well as Greece, is far too important. Rest assured, Cyprus has many friends in Washington, and I am proud to include myself in that number. Thank you very much, and God bless Cyprus, Greece, and the United States of America. We thank uh, our good friend, Congressman Smith from New Jersey. And now keeping uh, in track with uh, the Garden State of New Jersey, uh, we do have live with us uh, Representative uh, Donald Payne, uh, who is also from uh, the Garden State, uh, the great state of New Jersey where I formerly come from myself and grew up, and whose father, of course, was a big champion uh, of issues regarding the Eastern Mediterranean. And one of the issues that his father uh, was very keen and always advocating for was the return of the Parthenon marbles uh, back to Greece uh, from the British Museum. Uh, his son, Donald Jr., continues in that fight, and then so many other issues regarding advocating for the issues of the Eastern Mediterranean within the context of the uh, rule of law and U.S. interest. So it's a great uh, honor to have you with us here today, uh, Congressman uh, Donald Payne Jr. We give you the floor. Well, good morning and thank you so much. I want to thank the American Hellenic Institute for the invitation to speak with you today. And it is true. I have continued the fight that my father started to return the stones to their rightful home where they belong. We're here to commemorate the 48th anniversary of the horrible Turkish invasion of Cyprus. My family has been a strong supporter of the Cyprus independence movement. My father, Congressman Donald Payne Sr., was very passionate about the relationship between the U.S. and Cyprus. He believed the U.S. should take action to remove the Turkish forces from Cyprus, and he believed the Parthenon marbles should be returned to Greece. These are beliefs that I share today. Every country should have the right to self-rule and self-determination. Cyprus is no different. This is a small island. This small island has been a big part of Middle Eastern history. It has been part of this Assyrian British and Ottoman empires, and it served as a launching point for the Crusades and the founding of Israel. Today, it sits at the crossroads between Europe, 
in the Middle East and serves as the ambassador between these critical areas of the world. But it must be a free country so it can navigate the difficult political waters of the region. This is true for all countries such as Greece and Turkey. Unfortunately, Turkey has strayed from the path of democracy lately, and it needs to rededicate itself to free speech, fair elections, and human rights soon to avoid conflicts in the region. This is one of the reasons why I support the Eastern Mediterranean Security and Emergent Energy Partnership Act. A strong relationship between the US, Greece, and Cyprus is vital to the region. It will show Turkey that the American commitment to liberty is unwavering, that all countries need to be free to determine their own leaders without foreign interference. We know Turkey will return to the road of liberty when Turkish troops leave Cyprus. Then Cyprus will serve as an example of democracy for all countries to follow. With that, I say thank you. God bless the people of Cyprus. God bless Greece. God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Congressman. I very much appreciate your comments and being with us here today. Wish you continued good success in all your endeavors. Thank, thank you. you very much. And I'll always be there. I know. A we call away. It. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I do not see our next member of Congress live. So until he joins us, we will now go on like, to another good friend from, from New Jersey, uh, Congressman uh, Frank Pallone, who's been a long, long time advocate and supporter uh, of issues of the Eastern Mediterranean uh, on Capitol Hill. And Congressman uh, Pallone, also chairs the uh, the Armenian Congressional Caucus. So uh, we now uh, turn to uh, Congressman Pallone's uh, message. As a longtime member of the Congressional Hellenic Caucus and a strong supporter of Cyprus, I'd like to start by thanking the American Hellenic Institute, especially President Nick Larikakakis and everyone else joining today. I'd also like to recognize the strong leadership of my friends and co-chairs of the Congressional Hellenic Caucus, Carolyn Maloney and Gus Bilirakis. After almost 50 years, uh, I should say it's been 50 years since Turkey's illegal invasion, Cyprus has undergone incredible changes and overcome many difficult challenges. Cyprus's commitment to a long-standing friendship with the United States has been resolute, and it's been built on economic cooperation, our shared goals for the region, and mutual trust. And I know the close ties between the Cypriot people and the Hellenic American diaspora, many of whom live in my congressional district in central New Jersey, have helped bring our two nations together. As Cyprus continues to uphold its end of this partnership, I want you to know how much support you have been here in the United States Congress. And that includes our strong, consistent condemnation of Turkey's aggressions in the Eastern Mediterranean, including my work with other colleagues to block the sale of next generation F-16 fighter jets to Turkey. And the more we work together towards a common goal, the more we can start to resolve the most pressing issues in this important region. Please know that I'll continue working with my colleagues in Congress to bring us closer to partners like Cyprus, while also addressing the reckless behavior of pseudo allies like Turkey in the process. We thank uh, Congressman uh, Pallone uh, for always being there and for taking the time to send us his message today. Uh, continuing now with uh, a few more, uh, we have three more video messages uh, from members of Congress, uh, ladies and gentlemen, who are out there uh, viewing this. And now we turn our attention to uh, David Cicilline, Congressman uh, Cicilline, uh, who is from uh, the state of Rhode Island. 
and uh, who continues to champion the causes of the Eastern Mediterranean and is a very good friend. So let's uh, go now to uh, the comments of uh, David Cicilline. Thank you for inviting me to participate in the commemoration of the 48th anniversary of Turkey's illegal invasion of Cyprus. I wish I could join you by Zoom today, but I'm currently in a Judiciary Committee markup. Over the years, I've had the pleasure of working closely with many of you, including Nick Larakakis and my colleagues, Carolyn Maloney and Gus Filarakis, to strengthen the relationship between Cyprus and the United States. As a member of the House Foreign Affairs Committee, I've been critical of our country's relationship with Turkey, and I've worked to end the illegal occupation of Cyprus. In 2019, Congress passed my amendment to the National Defense Authorization Act to lift the arms embargo against Cyprus. I also worked closely with Congressman Deutsch and Senator Menendez to pass the Eastern Mediterranean Security and Energy Partnership Act into law to strengthen the alliance between the United States, Greece, Israel, and Cyprus. Last week, I worked with my colleagues to pass an amendment to this year's National Defense Authorization Act to suspend the transfer of F-16 fighter jets to Turkey until the Turkish government can better demonstrate their commitment to peace, stability, and a responsible foreign policy, including in Cyprus. While we've made great progress on the U.S.-Cyprus bilateral relationship and on Eastern Mediterranean cooperation, Turkey is closing in on a half century of illegally occupying Cyprus. We must redouble our efforts to reunify Cyprus. I look forward to continuing to work with you in the years ahead to build on the progress we've made together. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you today. We thank uh, David, uh, Congressman David Cicilline, as I said, a true champion on the issues of the Eastern Mediterranean and support for the rule of law. Uh, and now we uh, turn to a video message uh, from another tremendous advocate on the Hill regarding the issues of the Eastern Mediterranean. There's a Democrat from New Hampshire, uh, Chris Pappas, and who, of course, if you've been following the news in the last couple of weeks, you will know that he, uh, he was leading the efforts uh, to oppose the sale of the F-16s to Turkey and uh, help uh, with the amendment that uh, passed in the House on the uh, National Defense Authorization Act. Of course, it still has a few more steps to go, including clearing the hurdles over in the Senate, but we are hopeful uh, that he will do so and would ultimately stay in place when the full uh, NDAA comes up for a final vote in the fall. But uh, for now, uh, we go to uh, his message. Hi, everyone. I'm Congressman Chris Pappas, a proud Greek American representing New Hampshire in Congress. It's been 48 years since Turkey illegally invaded Cyprus. Turkish forces uprooted tens of thousands of Greek Cypriots from their homes, destroyed religious and cultural sites, and forcibly removed families from their own communities. 48 years later, Turkey's continued illegal occupation of the northern third of the island still stands in the way of reunification. That's why I've consistently called for Turkey to withdraw its troops and end its illegal occupation of Cyprus. This includes a one year ago this month when the Erdogan government moved to illegally reopen Verosha Beach, violation of international law. I've called on the Biden administration to publicly reassert our commitment to a comprehensive settlement to reunify Cyprus as a bi-zonal, bi-communal federation. It's long past the time that we uphold our commitment to Cyprus and her people by putting Turkey on notice. A stable and reunified Cyprus benefits the United States, the entire Eastern Mediterranean, and most of all, Cypriots themselves. As a member of the Hellenic community, I'm committed to strengthening and defending the United States alliance with Cyprus. I'm really proud to stand with my fellow members of the Congressional Caucus on Hellenic issues as well as the people of Cyprus. I'll continue to work with my colleagues in Congress and my friends in the community toward our common goal, a Cyprus that is united, at peace, and free. Thank you. We thank uh, Congressman Chris uh, Pappas uh, for uh, his comments. And uh, now to our last video message uh, of this morning in this uh, commemoration. Uh, we go to another uh, member of Congress of New York, Democrat uh, Grace Ming, uh, for years has uh, appeared before American Hellenic Institute events such as this to commemorate certain aspects that we promote during the course of the year, including the annual Salute the Green Independence Day on Capitol Hill. And she's always been there regarding the issues of the Eastern Mediterranean. And we, now we welcome her uh, message that uh, we will put up now. 
Hello, my name is Congresswoman Grace Mang, representing Queens, New York. First, I want to thank my good friend Nick Laragakis for inviting me to give today's remarks, although I wish we could be together in person. I'm particularly pleased to send my virtual greetings to Ambassador Papa Dalbalu and Deputy Chief of Mission Savidu Penayotu. This is such an important day to remember and observe, to commemorate those whose lives were lost during the Turkish invasion of Cyprus and the impact that the Turkish presence has had on the people of Cyprus for almost five decades. I know that the impact of the Turkish invasion is still deeply felt by families across the regions and here in the US, from families of the missing persons to the pain and trauma of the destruction of ancestral homes and important historical and religious sites. I'm honored to join you today as the Vice Chair of the State and Foreign Operations Appropriations Subcommittee and a proud member of our Hellenic Caucus. In fact, just last month, our SFOPS committee passed out a bill that highlights the U.S.-Hellenic partnership and includes critical foreign assistance through the International Military and Education Training Program. The bill also highlights the importance of the 3 plus 1 partnership between the U.S., Israel, Greece, and Cyprus. Our strong bond extends beyond the Mediterranean. Hellenic partners have been strong allies in defending Ukraine. Right now, Greece has provided the U.S. critical access to the port of Alexandropolis, which has allowed the U.S. military to continue to support Ukraine as that nation defends itself. I've also been a strong advocate for countering Turkey's posture against U.S. national security interests. I recently supported an amendment to the annual national defense bill that would restrict Turkey's ability to purchase advanced aircraft from the U.S. until they cease their unauthorized territorial overflights of Greece. The strength of our relationship is also reflected in the U.S. I hear all the time about the importance of the U.S. Hellenic Alliance from everyday people in my district here in Queens. There is a wonderful and active Hellenic community in my home neighborhood of Bayside, Queens. If you just walk around the neighborhood, you can see how the community is a stalwart contributor to our local culture, nonprofit world, and the small business community. Each October, I get to take my family to our local Greek Orthodox Church Festival at St. Nicholas, which is guaranteed to be a fun time filled with delicious food, culture, and music. These people-to-people -people relationships are just as important as joint military and energy partnerships in maintaining the U.S. Hellenic Alliance. Thank you for your support over the years for this partnership. Well, we thank uh, Congresswoman Ming. And ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, that concludes the video messages with 10 minutes to go, but we are still uh, waiting to hear live from uh, Congressman Ted Deutsch, uh, which we hope to still hear from. Uh, Congressman Deutsch uh, is a co-founder of the Congressional Hellenic Israeli Alliance, acronym known as CHIA. Uh, and he, as of next year, he will be also the new president of the American Jewish Committee and has been a, a true friend and advocate on the issues. And we hope to uh, be able to still have him uh, join us live uh, before uh, we have to go off the air here. Uh, in the meantime, uh, allow me to thank Elias Gerasoulis, uh, who has done an excellent job. He's our public policy consultant and uh, who is responsible for reaching out to the congressional offices uh, and to uh, get them to, uh, oh, and there he is now. Uh, you saved me a, a, a filibuster for 10 minutes until you came on, Congressman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, carry on, I would love to hear that. <laughs> but uh, I just uh, spoke about uh, what a tremendous friend and advocate you have been in all your years on Capitol Hill, of course, also the co-founder of the CHIA. And of course, uh, we will lose you now, but we'll, Look forward to working with you in a different capacity uh, as Indeed. the new president of the American Jewish Committee, one of the leading, if not the leading uh, advocacy group of any kind uh, in Washington as it relates uh, to uh, public policy issues. So uh, we uh, welcome you here. We wish you good luck, obviously, in the future. 
and we look forward to your comments today. Unfortunately, on another black commemoration on something that we should not be going into 48 years. But here we are nonetheless, and we look forward to your comments. Uh, well, thank you very much. And I'm uh, sorry I was a couple of minutes late, and it is great to, to uh, join together with so many friends. And thanks to the American Hellenic Institute, and, and thanks, Nick, for the invitation to be here today to acknowledge, uh, I'd like to take a minute and acknowledge uh, his eminence, uh, Archbishop L.P. De Foros. I, I think, I can't really see anyone, but I think is here. Uh, Ambassador Papadopoulou, my friend, is here. And uh, Ms. Savadu for joining as well. Um, really, uh, uh, it's just, there's so many leaders on this Zoom that I've uh, had the, the real privilege to get to know over the years. Leaders from the Hellenic community, leaders, um, uh, of of uh, their their communities in so many ways, and I'm so grateful for Diabetes, all that comma. you do to advocate for Cyprus and the strong U.S.-Cyprus relationship. I don't okay. know. Uh, was that from your end? Because it wasn't from my no, end. <laughs> it was. It was not. It was not from my end. No. Um, but it has. It really has been a pleasure getting to know and work with each of you um, in so many ways. But especially as the the founding co-chair with my good friend Gus Bilarakis of the Congressional Hellenic Israel Alliance. And um, as most of you know, I, I chair the Chia Caucus. Uh, it's been uh, incredible to do it with Gus, who's such an amazing and unwavering advocate in Congress for Hellenic issues. And, um, and the support of the caucus from over the past nine years uh, from the community and, and in large part because of the special relationships that we've had and have built with the Hellenic American community uh, here in Congress has meant so much as we've moved forward with our work. And today, as you point out, we're here to mark 48 years since the Turkish invasion of Cyprus. 48 years that the island's been divided. And I know that all of you, everyone here is committed to reunification, but the challenge has become so much greater as Erdogan has continued to lead Turkey further and further away from uh, from open, from an open democratic society. And the jailing of journalists and judicial officials and political opponents is so deeply troubling. And Erdogan's increasingly threatening behavior, uh, given the upcoming elections that should be close elections, uh, is destabilizing and gives even more pause uh, for us to think that, that Turkey will allow for UN negotiations to resume and to succeed. Nevertheless, the US has to continue to support a sustainable resolution that sees a reunified bi-zonal, bi-communal federation in Cyprus. Uh, I, like, um, like so many of you, remain hopeful that the UN process can again begin moving in a positive direction, but we cannot allow Erdogan's aggression to continue unchecked. Uh, we here in Congress understand the concerns that foreign troops on Cypriot soil would pose. That's one of the reasons that we worked successfully to block the sale of F-35s. It's why we remain deeply engaged to ensure that there is no sale of F-16s without a, a change in Turkish behavior. And it's why we also will continue to support Cyprus as it defends its, its EEZ from Turkish incursion. So we value Cyprus as a member of the EU, a strategic partner of the United States. And uh, the best way to push back against uh, Turkish aggression is to support our allies. It's the same thing as we stand together to push back against Russian aggression. Uh, we, should, we should support our allies and not force them to seek uh, assistance from others. So I'm so happy I've been able to play a part in ensuring congressional support for the US-Cyprus relationship and that it remains strong and enduring. I'm always grateful to be able to spend time with this group. And I look forward to the day when we're celebrating reunification instead of marking uh, the anniversary date of the invasion. And finally, as you said, I, I will be leaving Congress later in the fall, uh, but I uh, so look forward to having the opportunity to continue to work together from my new perch uh, to further strengthen the relations between the Hellenic community and the Jewish community uh, to build even further the Chia Caucus and the good work that it does in Congress. Uh, and most importantly, to continue to be uh, friends with, with uh, all of you. Thanks so much for letting me join today. Thank you, Congressman. And as I said, we, we thank you for all your support while on Capitol Hill. We look forward to continuously being in contact with you and in your new position. And as you know, that the three plus one is exceptionally important to the process. 
And we certainly here at the American Clinic Institute promote it as much as possible. And we'll look to continue to advance that three plus one from your new position uh, at the American Jewish Committee. And we wish you uh, much success and good luck in that endeavor and uh, all the best uh, moving forward. We thank you again for being with us here today. Thank, thanks so much. It's an honor to be with you there. Thanks. Thank you, Ted. Bye-bye. Yeah. Well, th this concludes the uh, congressional uh, remarks. Allow me once again to go back to who I was thanking, and that was Elias Yerosoulis, our public policy consultant who was uh, responsible, uh, who helped to coordinate many of the meetings, if not all of the meetings that you saw here today. So we thank him for all his uh, invaluable work uh, that he does for the American Hellenic Institute and our public policy outreach. I want to thank our uh, summer uh, exceptional intern, Nicholas Cronus, who helped to produce uh, the Zoom uh, here today uh, during the absence of Dimos Theophanopoulos, who's uh, on vacation with his family in Greece. We certainly uh, like to thank uh, all those who participated uh, live today and those who sent in uh, messages uh, that we were able to play from Capitol Hill. But I want to thank, especially thank, of course, uh, the ambassador of Greece uh, to the United States, Alexandra Papadopoulou, the DCM of the Embassy of the Republic of Cyprus to the United States, Maria Savidou, and of course, uh, his eminence, uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, who took the time to send in a message via video, Archbishop Pedro Foros, we thank him for his continuing support. And to my last but not least, my good friend, Dr. Zina Christodoulou, uh, Chairman of the uh, HEPA Cyprus and Hellenic Affairs Committee. And once again, of course, we congratulate the War of HEPA for its 100 years of service to the community. It's a service that they provide not only to our community, but the general American community at large, and they do it second to none. And we congratulate with them. And we are always honored to be in partnership with areas where we can cooperate together. And there are many of those areas and we look forward to continuing the cooperation that we have with AHEPA and we congratulate them against on their 100 years and, uh, and, and uh, on Jimmy Kokodas for uh, once again, uh, being elected for another term to uh, the, is being a Supreme President. Finally, let me just say, ladies and gentlemen, this organization was founded 48 years ago as a direct result of the illegal invasion and ultimate occupation of Cyprus by the Republic of Turkey, a NATO ally. 48 years ago, no one would have thought of that, not Gene Rosidis who founded this organization and who led the effort in the US Congress and frankly with the help of the grassroots of AHEPA because there were no grassroots of AHI at the time as a new organization. And he, Rosidis on many occasions went on to say, if it wasn't for the help of AHEPA, uh, it's, it's resources that it provided economic and grassroots, we will probably never be successful in being able to pass uh, the watershed landmark legislation on the arms embargo against Turkey, against all odds that were against that measure at that time. But nonetheless, 48 years later, this occupation continues. The island continues to be divided and it needs to be whole free and at peace. And that still seems to be very elusive. And our administration over the years, all administrations unfortunately have failed in their obligation to resolve this issue. Ukraine is Ukraine and is being perpetrated by a country that the United States right now has no good relations with, and that's Russia. Well, Turkey is not a nation of that, na of that caliber, supposedly. They're supposed to be a, a country that's an ally of the United States, a country that's been a beneficiary of US military and financial aid into the hundreds of millions, and not to, if not billions of dollars over the course of the last five decades and more. They are supposed to be inside the tent. They are our NATO ally. How can we here, sit here and, 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 and accept in 2022 that a NATO country is occupying with an army, which is technically an army of NATO, a member of the European Union? On the surface, it sounds ridiculous, and it is. And it needs to cease, cease and desist. And it's up to all of us to continue to fight for that resolution of the island to be whole free and at peace because it serves the ultimate interest also of the United States of America in a very critical area of the Eastern Mediterranean. And I will, and the American Hellenic Institute will continue 
as long as we are here to continue to advocate and fight for a solution to Cyprus that falls in line with US interests, the rule of law, international law, human rights, and for the good people of Cyprus. And we are reminded, if I may, to this audience, and for the record, once again, of what President Biden said to this organization, the American Hellenic Institute, in a letter in 1989, when he was chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. It was valid then, and it is valid now. And I'm gonna take a moment to read this. He said in part, we in the United States must maintain our steadfast commitment to the cause of unity and freedom for Cyprus. We must demonstrate to the Cypriot people that they do not stand alone. How can we go about doing this, he says. First, we must urge the new administration at that time, George Bush, to make Cyprus a higher priority in American foreign policy. Well, I submit to you, he's now the new administration that's in charge. Is he placing it on a higher foreign policy priority of American foreign policy? Second, he says, the United States must demonstrate support for peace initiatives. At the same time, he continues, we cannot lose sight of the fact that the rights of Greek Cypriots have been trampled upon. And we must ensure that their claims to ancestral land and property seized during the 1974 invasion are not compromised. Finally, he says, and I quote again, we must send a signal to Turkey that until it has removed every last soldier from Cyprus, it will never be recognized as a full member of the international community, end quote. Today, there are still over 43,000 heavily militarized Turkish NATO forces on the occupied part of Cyprus. We remind this of our president and this administration and those who are in, 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 in the decision policy centers at the State Department, the National Security Council, that these words should not be hollowed words of what he said then as Senator. They were poignant then and they served and they are true today. And we have a responsibility as American citizens to keep reminding the administration of what he said then and what is right uh, regarding the people of Cyprus and moving forward with a resolution. And that only can happen with putting pressure on Turkey and no one make any, you know, be any, have any illusions other than that. The only way that Turkey is gonna respond is if the United States put pressure on Turkey to do so with hard conditions and red lines. And the days of appeasement needs to cease and desist once and for all. And if they don't, we will continue to be emboldened, rogue characters like Mr. Erdogan to continue to do the, the things that they do, which ultimately, ultimately help to uh, affect negatively the interest of the United States in a very critical area called the Eastern Mediterranean. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you once again for joining in today. Again, we thank all our speakers. We hope next year, 49 years, we will be celebrating a whole free and unified Cyprus and not another black commemoration. Until such time though, we will continue to advocate for all the issues of the Eastern Mediterranean here at the American Hellenic Institute. Join us again for some time in September where we will look to commemorate another unfortunate black uh, mark in history, the 100 years of the burning of Smyrna. We will send you information at that time when we put that program together. In the meantime, we wish you all a very nice rest of the summer. Wish you good health. And thank you for joining us here once again today. Goodbye, everybody.